All right. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to Intercultural Spark, that uh, show about the spark inside you that drives you to spark change in the world through mission-driven businesses and life projects. I am your host. My name is Deanna Schoss, and I am delighted for you if you're joining live or you're joining after the fact. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, each week, again, we talk to people who are entrepreneurs, people who are aligning values with passions, with what they do in the world. And we always hope we'll take away some tips that will help all of us as, as business owners. Uh, today's guest, boy, you can't align sort of business and personal and values more when you are a creative person in the world. And our guest today, Liz Linder, is a photographer uh, extraordinaire. And she started with photographs of rock stars and Carly Simon. She went on to like medical rock stars like Dr. Fauci. And, and she works with businesses doing amazing portraits that capture the essence of people and really tell stories. Uh, but her career, she's been in her things have been featured in her things. They're called photographs. I've been in um, like Rolling Stone and the New York Times and on House of Cards and Gotham. Like she is really the real deal. So we could not be more delighted to welcome to the show today, uh, photographer and uh, successful entrepreneur, Liz Linder. Hey, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. That was such a lovely intro. Oh, good. The day is already off to the first <laughs> That's like one of those where we're in. Thank you very much for joining. We'll see you next week. Um, so actually, I'm going to start this week. I also do. There's something before I even ask you your first question. I am going to do our ta-da, our flash exercise. And it'll help us kind of warm up and loosen up a little <laughs> bit. So I also am a, a, a group fitness instructor. I teach aerobics like five times a week. And there's a little known genre called interpretive aerobics, which really gets at the deeper <laughs> meaning of fitness. Okay. So I'm going to do an exercise. We're both going to do an exercise together. I'm going to make myself big screen for just a second to show it. And for both you and everyone who's watching live, I want you to think throughout the show, like why we picked that exercise. So let me show it first. And then I'm going to bring you back to, um, to do it with me. All right. So this is, um, this is a shoulder exercise. I'm going to pick up my handy dandy weights. These look like they would be filled with air. Like they're just for show. Um, but they're, what are mine? Mine are three kilograms each, like six pounds. Shoulder exercise, two exercises. Bring weights or just your hands to your shoulders. You press straight up, come down, elbows out, and then come out to the side. So it's two exercises for your shoulders right here and then to the side. And we're going to break it down and do one of each. So one arm up, one arm side, one arm up, one arm side. Uh, Liz is doing it here. I'm going to bring us both back. Liz, show us your shoulder exercise. So one arm up. I just so happen to have these. Oh, nice. Perfect. Actually, and your weights match my, my, um, my logo. So you're oh, like, yeah. well, that so was plan, visual. Obviously. There we go. Okay. That's our exercise. As we talk today, I want you to give some thought. We'll circle back at the end to, um, so that you can try to guess why we picked that exercise. So all right. First question. It's so easy. Um, how, like, when did you pick up your first camera? When did you start doing photography? Oh gosh. Well, I'm going to go back to the 1970s and talk about a Kodak. Wait, Instagram. before you were born. You're so sweet. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. In the 1970s, I got really into, um, it, it was, I think we had a Kodak Instamatic. That was the first one. And then there were others that were, um, you know, the film, this film size was always changing. There were cartridges, there were those little flash packets you put on the camera, but I, I was fascinated with, you know, what you could do, how you could turn the world into two dimensions and you could capture a part of it from a different angle or unusual perspective and, and revisit it and share it with people. So mm -hmm. that's, that was early. I was probably a, you know, preteen. God, was the Instamatic that one that was like a little thin sandwich? You know what I'm talking about? There was that camera oh, everyone okay. had that was so like an inch thick. Oh, Mine okay. Was, oh, that one. was actually black. This is, you know, okay. something I got from a collector. 
I and love it. Yeah, cameras where you had to get the... I've got the weights. I've got the camera. God, you are oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to see, like, what else would I have? You'd be good on that game. You know, like, when kids were on the bus and they'd say, okay, who has such and such in their purse? And you'd have to bring it to the front. So I wasn't on that bus, but, okay. <laughs> but it sounds curious. You know? We'll play it next week. Yeah. Um, so did you always know, when did you know? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm a photographer. Um, and sorry that I say it like that. But a lot of people, like, like doing photography. It's a fantastic hobby you are running a very successful business. So did you always know it would be a business or when did it actually become a business for you? Oh, that's a good question. So I picked, I was ser I, I picked up a camera when I was a kid basically, but I got serious about it in high school. We had to choose electives. And I remember mm. taking a tour. We went through the dark room and in the dark room, there was so cool. um, yeah, 16 by 20 inch pictures on the walls of like, you know, all the kids stuff, like what they'd printed. Mm -hmm. and there was this huge candle. It was 16 by 20 inches and it was like a flame and a wax candle. And I just thought, that's amazing. So I jumped in and started taking classes mm -hmm. and got pretty serious. And we had a great photo department and I started doing portraits for yearbook after a couple of years and, you know, did like won awards and the teacher really took me under his wing. And at that point, you know, I was being a photographer. Like I worked for, I think one summer I worked for the Gannett newspaper. And, uh, and then it was time to go to college. So I went to college and continued. Mm -hmm. I was a fine artist major, fine art major. And then mm -hmm. uh, after college, it was like, do I what, go to law school or do I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So I kind of fast forward and thought through after law school, I'm going to have to get a job and that's the scary thing. And how do I get a job? So instead I thought I love photography. I'm just going to try to get a job in photography and anyway, fast forward. And here I am. I, mm -hmm. I basically did you then, um, I like that Cecilia said <laughs> that exercise worked my shoulders and my brain. I know it's like, don't chew gum while you're trying to have things do, do <laughs> opposite sides for sure. <laughs> No. So it sounds like, did you work for somebody else before you built your own business? And it's a good, the reason I want to ask that question, Liz, is I don't know if anyone who's watching has like teenage kids or like younger people now are like, I'm just going to go straight to having my own business. Um, you know, oh, others. I, I didn't even plan that. I, okay. Okay. The first thing I did was I, I came to Boston in 1990 and I found a job at the photographic resource center. It seemed like, you know, the mecca of what you could do as a photographer. It was a little kind of public funded gallery now mm -hmm. owned by Leslie College. And I was, I just met a lot of photographers. I was in a library. I worked in the library where there were all these books on photographers and we had a lot of speakers coming through. And that job lasted about a year. Um, mm -hmm. They lost funding. It was not really a, a job that you could go into the future with. Um, and I worked in a camera store. I just did anything photographically related. And then I um, found a photographer uh, who was wonderful and really took me under his wing. And I, I ended up working for him, um, you know, helped him with the dark room uh, early on. And he, you know, I kind of saw how he worked with clients and he helped me understand how to do that and gave me small jobs. And pretty soon I was just making, you know, com turning conversations about portraits into work and building a business. Wow. That's really oh. interesting. And then you yeah. separated from that person then to become, you know, here's the thing oh. about being someone who's really visual that as you're talking, I'm just going to throw your website up here because it goes through some of the photos. Your photos are extraordinary. Like they really just capture these amazing moments. And so, so that's another question. Like you can start a business but you, you know, last week we could barely talk because you were so, you were so busy with all the work you were doing. I don't know if you can answer this question, but or maybe I need to get your clients on, on the show. But what makes you rise above? Like what distinguishes you from other people that are that are that are running businesses as photographers? Oh, that's a hard question. I don't even know if it, uh, that would be hard to answer. I really am very focused on the next thing, you know, just kind of the deadlines and the next the next the next mm -hmm. shoot, the next deadline, uh, try to have some long range vision. Um, I, when I was starting out, so I worked for a number of photographers for the first few years, there used to be this thing that you did called assist other photographers. So I was a professional assistant for a few years and, uh, um, okay. And then I, um, well, I started combining that with my own shoots. You know, I did darkroom work for some people. I, um, 
I uh, learned the ropes of how to charge, how to structure shoots. Oh, you know, thing. I mean, that is okay. so important. Wait, what you're yeah. saying right now, Liz, is so important, though, that you're a creative artist, but you had to learn like it's still a business. So what to charge, how to do it. Like, yeah, talk about that. You had to actually translate your your creativity into packages that people could buy to make it a business. Yeah. So I, I guess I just, well, first of all, I, I really, it, when I started out, I was gravitating towards working with artists. I was a very creative mm -hmm. person, I suppose. And um, my friends were musicians and actors and, you know, writers and I, some of them needed pictures and mm -hmm. I started getting this, Oh, could you take my photograph? I'll credit you. And mm -hmm. it, you know, after like, two or three of those, it's clear that credit's not enough and who's paying for the cameras, you know? Why does everyone think that's okay with artists? I used to run into yeah. that working like in city government. Actually, I was the guilty one on the other side being like, oh, but you'll get exposure. You'll get exposure though, Liz. Does exposure buy your groceries? You know? It, it doesn't really. <laughs> no. I was like, yeah, when I was younger, I was like, I put a sign, we'll shoot for food. And I, we can't say that anymore because, you know, that's just a bad word. Oh, I know. But, um, yeah, yeah we'll, 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 we'll capture images for food. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I mean, that's what I do, right? I, I make a living making images. I make a living telling stories. I, I figured out pretty early on that if I wanted to be a working artist, I had to get clients and they had to pay for services. And um, I figured out also pretty early on that I needed support if I wanted to do anything larger scale. And, um, you know, oh, what I, do you mean by uh, larger scale? Larger scale meaning I could either spend my time in a dark room and turn down shoots, or I could take more shoots and have somebody do my dark room work. Cause it, uh, I was, I was okay. working in a dark room at the time. And so I ended up hiring somebody to do my printing. And the first person I had was fantastic and mm -hmm. also could fix anything. It was like, you know, MacGyver, he, he <laughs> He, he, he in a I large broke, he'd fix it. You know, like there was a problem with the camera, he'd fix it. He was fantastic. And um, and we used to hang out and like, you know, we'd get to work, we'd smoke cigarettes, have coffee, and 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 then like an hour later we'd start working and and work pretty, you know, like steadily through the next eight hours. And um it was just a mix of like shoots and delivering and making sure that people picked the right images and making sure the quality was managed mm -hmm. all the way through, making sure that there was an invoice that they were paid. And then as I got busier and busier, I sort of started realizing like, wow, I, I do kind of like the numbers, but I am slow at them, you know? And mm -hmm. if I am doing the numbers, then I'm not doing the work that pulls in the money so that someone can do the numbers. So that, you know, I found somebody to help me with my bookkeeping. Um, I worked so out great. a small, small but mighty team um, mm -hmm. who's incredible, you know, who they are um, so creative and, really hardworking and, you know, kind of like roll up your sleeves and just take care of it. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't possibly do what I'm doing. Without them. You know, I, I, what I love about that though, as well is people always focus. I talk about this a lot in the show because a lot of the people who watch the show are business owners are trying to drive business and, and our society tends to really value like big business. You're making thousands of jobs. But what I'm finding is that what really is the backbone of like the kind, caring people of the world are smaller business owners who are employing, you know, even, up, you know, five, 10, whatever people. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're doing is so smart, though, which is to have someone else do the parts that, like you said, what's the part that makes money? You know, I'm going to, I usually do this at the end, but, but because talking to a photographer, like, like you have to see the photos. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to. Go ahead and jump to our flash photo stories. <laughs> it's like this part of the show was made for you. And then we can have our conversation and talk as we go. What that means is I flash photos on the screen and then you just give me like a, you know, a couple sentence story about it. But I think it'll also give us a chance because I've got other questions like tell me about this photo because then my next question is who's like, you're so cool. Like, is, is there anyone that you actually were? Do you ever get in awe when you're taking pictures of people like Carly Simon? Or I try not people? to get in awe because it it makes it hard to connect and do my sure. So, so the thing about Carly Simon was that I had photographed her very, very early on. I used to work for Berkeley College of Music, and I photographed mm. her, you know, when she visited the college. And it was black and white film. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't one on one with her, but she was in a room, and we were, you know, I was capturing images, and I and I put her name down like she was somebody I photographed. Mm -hmm. But I felt a little bit like. Mm. I did, but I wasn't interacting with her. And then a few years ago, I had an opportunity to 
capture her with a, a young filmmaker at the time who was very up and coming, um, who was working on a project and asked me if I'd accompany him. And we went to her compound um, and I photographed, you know, I was basically yeah. photographing the filming of this documentary that he was working on. And I um, ended up having a private session with her. I just said, hey, would you like you know, do you want a portrait? Do you want to update your portrait? And we were in her closet and like in her bedroom and on her porch and on her swing. Mm. Just took a, you know, it was really a So do you get kind of, you must, you have to be bossy in this sense. I mean, you have to be like, try this, do that. Like how, what's that balance? How much are you bossing? How much are they saying? Because I feel like if you're like, would you want to try this? It's not going to work. Like, I How try does... to get people, so most of the time, and this happens to me, somebody picks up a camera and there's this little like thing that goes tweak inside, you know, when it's turned mm -hmm. on you. And I feel like if I, well, I've noticed that if I ask people to do things for me, then they're focused on what to do, okay. even if it's not working, right? I'm just going to take them through, like, sometimes it takes me a little while to figure out what's working. So I'll, you know, stand to the left, stand to the right, you know, mm -hmm. to try crossing your arms, put your hands in your pockets, turn mm -hmm. around. You know, flip your hair, uh, pick up the book, you know, mm -hmm. why don't you cross your legs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, You've got to not be worried, though, because what would freak me out about that is if I still wasn't getting the shot I knew I wanted, I'd start getting nervous. You can't. Like you it can't, was taking too time. I, so, do you have a secret time. for managing? How do you do? You I, have just, I just don't. I just it's like just I cannot don't. open that door. If I'm on a shoot and having a perception of something that I'm not, that's freaking me out, I just, I try not to open that door. I really okay. work very hard to just keep moving forward and just trust that it's going to, you know, like we'll mm -hmm. hit that moment where it breaks and, yeah. and be able to get what I need. Well, and, and clearly I'm projecting onto you. I'm not a photographer. I'm projecting yeah. onto you. Wait, I'm sorry. I just cut you off. Finish your sentence. No, that's it. I, I finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I have one photography story. I always like to share a story if I can. Um, because it's the only time it'll fit. But so back in Boston, so I lived in Boston from 87 to 94. And my husband, Gino, uh, got a job as a photographer's assistant and they were filming an event for George Burns. It was like his hundredth, it, it might've been like his 99th birthday. I don't know. Um, but it was just really funny. And my husband, I have to say, is very handsome. And the photographer got mad because he's like, look at me, you're not supposed to be looking at my assistant. Uh -huh. <laughs> So my one photography story. So, uh, all right. I found this photograph. This was not the one that you selected. So you said no. that you, you did a lot of rock and rollers. I found this photo fascinating because nowadays you just go, oh, that must've been Photoshopped. You must've put her face into that magnifying glass. But I feel like you're actually taking photos. How did you do this photo? Or is it oh, photo? I, I had a magnifying. This, this is funny. This is like one of the last photographs that I did in my old studio in a loft in the South End in the Piano Factory in Boston. It was probably the last day I, I had that set up. And um, this is a band, Betty Severe, that I loved. Mm -hmm. And um, I had this old magnifying glass that was just lying around. It was like a prop that sometimes got used, but not really. And mm -hmm. she grabbed it. And I started, if, like, if you hold it just the right place, you know, like it gets clear. And so we, anyway, we ended up playing with that for a while. And um, and this is one of the things that it's just like when you play with props, it relaxes people, then they're focused on a task. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Cause that's an amazing, I mean, that's a really cool shot. And like I said, nowadays people like just Photoshop everything, but I knew that, that like that you, uh, I knew that that was an actual photograph. So really amazing. This is me being like fangirl, like, like, oh, my God, you photograph such amazing people. How did you end up photographing uh, Dr. Just Fauci? A just a job. It was just a job. Yeah. What was the job? I, I'm not even going to go into it, but it was a job. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so we got that one. So actually, and you've done a lot of politicians and stuff. Speaking of which, she's been mayor. I read the caption for this, and you're like, she's been mayor for 10 years. I was like, really? Like, I, I didn't realize that the mayor, I'm still like on what is it? Mayor Menino. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know he's been gone. What I loved about this photo though, Liz, is like the framing is so perfect. Like you've got her with the skyline, like it is so perfectly framed. Well, that was before she was mayor, but she was running okay. and or it was clear she was running. And I worked on this project that you saw earlier when you showed the sort of intro to my website. Uh, yeah. When we were in lockdown, I um, came up with this idea, which seems really like obvious from this perspective it seemed so novel from at the time which was to m make a mask with the word vote on it because oh my god you know mm -hmm. there, you look at masks at the time and right. 
wouldn't it be cool if you put a word on it and what if the word was vote? So I made this little side company called the Vote Mask. And oh. as we were um, getting the word out for it, I had the opportunity to interact with some interesting people. Michelle Wu was one of them. And mm -hmm. the idea was that this is the city that she loves and is going to, you know, care for. And so we, um, we set this shot up and I captured it. So fantastic. Actually, Cecilia wants to know, how do you feel about the fact that with today's technology, everyone says thinks they're a photographer? I mean, I kind of think we're clearly showing that that's not true, just given this real artistry of your work. Um, but yeah, a lot of people will just say, oh, I'll, I'll just shoot it with my with my iPhone. Well, I mean, I just it's funny. I was just talking to a friend who wants a portrait. Mm. She wants it quickly. And I don't think she wants to cover the cost. And I thought maybe mm. I'll shoot it with my iPhone. And she said, fine. Um, you know, everyone is a photographer now. This is, it's a way of talking. Everyone is a photographer. Everyone is a image mm -hmm. maker of some kind. It depends on how you understand um, how images are read and made mm -hmm. and created and what they say that I think maybe distinguishes a little bit of, mm -hmm. of, of a photographer from the every mm -hmm. person. Um, but, you know, people are very sophisticated. Images are part of uh, communication now and conversation and and so I how do I feel about that um, I seem to still have a place in in having a, a, people sure. seem to still need a certain kind of portrait or a certain kind of documentary mm -hmm. or storytelling and so I mean I'm very mm -hmm. busy mm -hmm. so I, well uh, it's interesting yeah. something you just said and I don't know if you that often but you also said something that indicated even like another level of a product which is they didn't want the whole setup so I could just take it with my iPhone so is that something that doesn't feel like a good use of your time, or is it? Like Wait, if it's less ask money. Ask the question because I'm not sure I understood it. Oh, um, you had mentioned like for the person who didn't want the full setup, and you said, "Oh, I'll just take it with my iPhone." Was that something you did for business, or that was just? Well, a, ultimately, uh, wouldn't it be great if I could just do it for business? All I have to just just walk up with the phone in my pocket and no, yeah. no gear and just go to it. So I don't know that that could be. Um, Maybe the future. Maybe the future. We'll see. I mean, there's something about an SLR. Well, I have mirrorless now, but there's something <laughs> about that that um, is appealing. Mm -hmm. And what's going on here? Um, well, this is so Misty Copeland is a ballerina, black ballerina. And mm -hmm. these are legacy black ballerinas that she was um, uh, she gave a talk. And uh, hold on a second. I'm moving some alerts off my screen so I can see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> This was just a group portrait I did on a on a shoot that was a, a collect, you know, that was basically what is the experience of, of being a black ballerina in America and, you know, mm. who's, who paved the way and what is it like today? And um, that's that's pretty mm. much all. Who were some of the other dancers in the. In the picture. Oh, um, they're they basically come from this. Um, what is the name of it? It's like the legacy. I had notes and I closed my window. It's the legacy. Um, it, it, they're black ballerinas who who danced in basically in New York. Yeah. And they paved the way for somebody like Misty Copeland, who is just a rock Fantastic. star. Fantastic. And they never met. So now that they're meeting or now that. Oh, now I that bet that's met, a really great uh, connection. It was very, very, very emotional. Yeah. And I, I wanted to mm. take a collection of them. Um, this is a portrait of a woman in New York City. I just love it. She's celebrating her, rocking her grays before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, just, it's sort of an example of some of the personal work that I've done. Mm -hmm. Well, and I thought I saw something in the title that w had something to do with aging or something. Was it just life in New York or was there an aging thing? Because I saw how gorgeous she looked and I was wondering if you took my portrait, if you could make my skin look as clear as hers or is that just I'm, her skin I have the most amazing post-production person and if you asked her to do that she probably would really yeah. <laughs> fantastic so uh it, it goes uh it's a way of talking goes with the picture is worth a thousand words uh for sure mm -hmm. so uh well so you did i think you said a lot you had a whole uh what do you call it a whole collection that was just about about COVID and the pandemic. So this is, um, so one of the, yes, I do. So this is one of, um, I create stock libraries, image libraries mm -hmm. for different companies. And my my main ah. focus now is biotech, pharmaceutical, technology, education, higher ed, um, uh, finance. So, so this is some of the things, you know, it's like instead of buying an image of somebody who has no relationship with a company that, you know, they're, that whose website they're on, um, I go in and create images like this. Mm -hmm. 
So that's now, an example of, um, it, this was an example of just commercial work. Okay. And then, but I, when I gave you the images, I was sort of trying to sequence them because of it. then if you go to the next one, I don't know if you're using that, um, the guy at the car, it seemed like a good sequence. Probably not. So yeah. actually what happened was is thank you to Liz. So Liz has this amazing body of work. She, you know, I, with the flash photos, it's usually like four to six photos. She sent me like everything and was like pick. And so I had it, I think at like 600 photos, I had to narrow narrow it down. So I don't know, but we could probably find it because I may have gone to, um, oh, I, I have a question for you before I move on though. So you're doing this on, on spec for like stock, for, for stock photos. No, this things, was a right? job. Yeah, no, no, okay. these, my clients hire me. I don't, I, I tend not to do things on spec like that. Okay. And then who hires you? The stock photo company or who? No, the companies that I work for. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, see, you did the, the, I think I picked a different photo. That's the problem. When, when you sent me the links and mm -hmm. then it had, I could go left or right and scroll through. That's fine. I didn't realize you were actually sending me those photos to use. So I just looked at stuff like this That's okay. one. That's, is, this is just from a series. Occasionally I'll do personal work for the studio. And this is from mm -hmm. a series we did a number of years ago on, um, just sort of being overwhelmed and multitasking and in, in the world. And a lot of, a lot of these images included, you know, it was about distracted everything, you know, like being distracted no matter where you are, what you're doing. And this was sort of the opener, sort of, this mm -hmm. was mild distraction. It ends up, you know, with like, uh, they're all kind of light touch, you know, nobody's getting in a car accident or anything, but there's definitely like mm -hmm. the pedicure that went awry, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and this one struck me too, just because she clearly like, she's fixing her own hair. She's trying to care for the baby. She's watering the garden. It's just, you know, the way that we do everything uh, that really struck me on this one. Yeah. All right. So, so you and I, when we spoke, so you're now your Instagram and your personal work is this whole thing with shadows, which are so cool. They're just so cool. So I want to shift in the few minutes that we have left, Liz, is, oh, actually, <laughs> hey, I'm going to ask you a question about what I told you the show was going to be about. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Fire away. <laughs> Which is the alignment between business and personal. In the olden okay. days, you know, people would say like, oh, well, that's business. This is personal. But I feel like in real life with everything so accessible on the Internet, you actually can't have two different worlds. However, your personal work is a lot of this shadow work. How do you do you? And actually, just if I can say just from a marketing perspective, what these shadow things do is tell people who might hire you that you are like so freaking cool. Like you're just like the coolest person and who doesn't want to hire a cool photographer? Um, so that's my perception of it. How do you see business and personal separate and this work you're doing with the, with the shadow photography? Oh, thank you for asking that. So um, I've always done personal work alongside my professional work. I think of my Instagram account as clearly personal. Um, shadows and reflections are what you get with light right that's what that's what photography is about it's about capturing shadows and and what um I'm, I'm not so much on social media mostly because it makes me apprehensive about privacy and about mm -hmm. you know images going anywhere i tend not to share things that much that are too personal but i realized uh part of this came out of a project that i have with a friend called um we talk in pictures which is its own website we talk in pictures.com and I, I started, um, I was challenged to, you know, hey, somebody said, show more of yourself on social media. And I thought the only way I could do this is if I do it once a day or I will not do it. I can't do it once a week. I will just stop. And um, if I, I started showing my face and then I realized I don't really want to show my face because of facial recognition. So sometimes I do. Mm. But um, I'm really trying to, like, catch the algorithms a little bit. I'm sort of exploring you know, this world on screens, what is it like to live on a screen? You know, the shadow to me is, it kind of references some of the work I mm -hmm. use answers is abstract, figurative. I get to be the figure oftentimes because I'm always available. Um, and if I see the light in a certain way, it, um, I, I have the ability to capture it. It must as a photographer. And do you mind if I show your Instagram? No, since, no, no. Okay. No, I like, no. I, I'm, I'm having fun with it. Okay. Um, and first of all, actually, before I go to your Instagram, can we all please just take a minute and talk about how amazing your logo is? That is like the coolest logo ever because it's like the Liz 
actually, I don't need to explain it, but I'm like Queen Captain oh. Obvious. The two L's that make it look like a camera. That's I love your logo. Thank you. All right. I just want to just give a shout out. I ha I've had like such incredible design support with my logo mm -hmm. over the years, and it's, it, there, there were three designers who I'm close with. So it's like, it's almost too much to name everybody. But um, the one that I'm working with now is like off the hook. So good. And you know, you'll see on if you go to my blog, we're going to post um, some of his work. And we always tag him on Instagram. Okay. And the blog is on your website, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's, it, it needs to be updated. We've just been so busy that it, it's, it's coming. <laughs> I love that. We've just been so busy. Your yeah. full portfolio at LizLinder.com. So what I do find interesting, what you're saying, though, Liz, is that particularly as a creative, people want to know what you're like as an artist. And I love the fact that you're posting, you said, every every week Once or every day. day. Once a day. Once yeah. a day. Yeah. I do find that people who do, and I, and I haven't even had the discipline to do it, to find the once a day, like to find out what you're doing. How do you do... When I think of once a day, I always think, well, nobody cares. What am I posting? Like, do you have any of that? I'm not thinking about, I'm trying not to think about anybody else actually, which is crazy because that's what you're supposed to think about in social media. Mm -hmm. um, I am trying to do what pleases me. Okay. I want to make this a book. Um, I have, you know, it's like things that are like, so you see the rotisserie chicken, you see there's my hand in it. It's like basically how mm -hmm. social media is all very, it's very myopic. It's all about like, you know, here's... I, the downside of social media feels that way. You know, it can mm -hmm. be like just more pictures of me. So I just, I'm, tr I'm trying to subvert it a little bit and turn mm -hmm. it into something that's mm -hmm. me, not me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I do love how you've done with the photos. And honestly, the whole photo thing, because I'm assuming these are just pictures that you somehow frame and take. Uh, phenomenal how you capture these uh the the shadows this one in particular i love just because mm -hmm. it has the camera as well there's another one um i invite people to follow you and look because i know there's one where you've captured your face in the rear view mirror of your car and so it's just they're so good um mm -hmm. and again to me you know if you're talking marketing it's an expression of you people wanted to know you it's really personal i love how you came up with this idea of how do i be personal without actually being personal that that feels great. The discipline of once a day too is fantastic. So Liz, we have to go back now to decide, I'm going to pull this out, why we think that this, um, what do we, why do we think I have to pick up my weights again? Why did we choose I think that we, the editorial we, why did we choose this exercise for you? We chose it to keep my shoulders strong, to keep my body healthy. So when I photograph, I'm not collapsing mm, like that. Is that why? So true. Actually, this one right here, these are your camera holding muscles. Yeah. That's fantastic. I did not think about that one. I have two reasons for it. I'm going to put my weights okay. down to show you. Okay. One is the interpretive side. Give me an L. Give me another L. Okay. So that's your Liz Linder. But also then if I were going to, ooh, the shadow. I love this. I'm getting really deep now. The shadow of the big L's is the small L's that make the camera. Okay, that was all in that one exercise. Do you see why it's an under an underestimated genre of fitness? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, Liz, thank you so much. This was so much fun spending time with you. I just loved it. Thank you everyone who joined us live. Um, if you want to find Liz, please find her on, um, you can follow her on Instagram where you'll see all those amazing shadow photos. You can see her full portfolio which I highly recommend, like, like, please just totally spend hours doing that. And I'll have to take a look at this one that we talk in picture. So we'll take a look at that as well. Thank you so much for joining us today on Intercultural Spark. It was an absolute delight to spend time with you. Thank you. You were such a delight to talk with. That was really fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Great thanks. to catch up. We'll talk okay. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right. Bye. Bye.